stay-at-home lecture, The History of Medicine in Arkansas. The history of medicine in Arkansas is so wide and varied that it would be impossible to go over it all in this time allotment. So this presentation is just going to touch on some highlights. Francois Menard was considered a merchant in America, but he studied medicine in France and ended up at the Arkansas Post. While the wealthier citizens in the area were able to travel to New Orleans for medical care, Menard worked to care for those who could not afford to travel so far. Smallpox, diphtheria, typhoid fever were all present and inevitable threats at Arkansas Post because of its location at the meeting of the Arkansas, White, and Mississippi Rivers. In 1821, the capital of Arkansas Territory was moved to Little Rock. There were a few early doctors in Little Rock, including Matthew Cunningham. He came to the city in 1820 and served as the mayor of Little Rock in 1831. By 1829, Little Rock had a total of five doctors, while the closest other doctors were in Davidsonville, Hempstead County, and Cad Cadron. There weren't a lot. Sorry about that. Hot Springs has always been a draw for those looking to take advantage of the curing waters of the area. By 1804, there were already a rustic settlement and cabin at the spring, as found by explorers Dunbar and Hunter. The Hot Springs became a national reservation in 1832. Soon after the city of Hot Springs was incorporated in 1851, Bathhouses started springing up to commercialize the spring. Springing up springs. The Hill Bathhouse was the first, but others soon followed. By 1867, a row of bathhouses had grown up. Soon, the ramshackle wooden buildings were replaced by brick and stucco bathhouse, bathhouses, drawing millions of visitors to the healing waters. As you can see, there's a stark difference between the Hell bathhouse and the Imperial bathhouse. Previous to law stating that you must have a diploma to be able to be a licensed doctor, there were three ways to get licensed. You could undergo an apprenticeship where a prospective doctor would need to train with one who is already established. You could attend a for-profit school, which was a school owned by doctors where students purchased the tickets to attend certain lectures. At these schools, students never saw a patient. And there were university medical schools. In 1830, there were 22 in the United States, but none west of the Mississippi River. All of the university schools were allopathic which leads us to the four medical paths that could be taken by aspiring students. Allopathic medicine was the path that, was the path that believed that diseases are treated with drugs or surgery. Eclectic is the medical approach that believed diseases are treated through botanical and natural methods. This movement peaked in the 1890s and began to fade. Homeopathic medicine, was the belief that diseases would be treated with medicines that mimic the symptoms of the diseases. This was considered a pseudoscience. And there was osteopathic medicine, believed that diagnosis, that diseases are diagnosed and treated through the manipulation of joints and bones. It was the doctors that followed this path that were considered the real doctors. The Pulaski County Medical Society was not the first county medical society in Arkansas. The first was in Crawford County before the Civil War. After their establishment, though, the, the Pulaski County Medical Society divided into two organizations over a disagreement 
over a disagreement in the admit admittance of a member. The rival group became known as the College of Physicians and Surgeons. The fallout from this fracture would be felt for years in the Arkansas medical community. But in 1875, a new organization, the Arkansas Medical Society, was founded and is still in existence today. After years of disagreement, doctors from the different medical societies worked together to found a medical college. The college was affiliated with the Arkansas Industrial University which we now know as the University of Arkansas. And as a result, the medical school became a university medical school rather than a subscription for-profit based medical school. There were eight investing physicians who each invested $625 to secure the charter for the medical school. This school would become what we now know as the University of Arkansas for Medical Sciences, UAMS. The founders purchased this Spurandio restaurant for $5,000 to be the first home of the school. The school opened with 22 students. UAMS had three other locations, including the old state house before its current location. Pest houses were established as locations to quarantine those with infectious diseases. Little Rock established a pest house early on. In 1873, smallpox carriers were quarantined at the pest house to attempt to prevent the spread of the disease. Little Rock had a previous smallpox outbreak in 1831, which in part led to the creation of the City Board of Health. Another Little Rock Board of Health was created in 1881 in response to the yellow fever outbreak in Memphis. The yellow fever epidemic killed 5,000 in Memphis and 20,000 in the Mississippi Valley. There was a scare that the fever had made its way into Arkansas, but fortunately it had not. Originally, Originally called Charity Hospital, the first home of St. Vincent Hospital in Little Rock. Opened in 1888, it was founded by the Sisters of Charity of Nazareth, Kentucky. It was a 10-bed hospital created with the funds of Mr. and Mrs. Alexander Hagar, a wealthy couple who made a promise to God that if Little Rock was spared from the yellow fever epidemic, they would provide funds to build a hospital. St. John's Hospital in Fort Smith was the first hospital in Arkansas that was built to serve the community on a long-term basis. It was established in 1887 and founded by George, Reverend George Deegan, rector of St. John's Episcopal Church. In 1899, it consolidated with another hospital and became known as Bell Point Hospital. Went through a couple other name changes, and today it is known as Baptist Health Fort Smith. The Baptist Health System was established as Arkansas Baptist Hospital, an extension of the Arkansas Baptist State Convention in 1920. Today it is the largest medical system in the state. The first nursing school was also started in Fort Smith in 1895. The founding of the Arkansas Nurses Association followed in 1912. Dr. Ida Jo Brooks was the first licensed female doctor to set up a practice in the state. She was the daughter of Joseph Brooks, the candidate for governor in 1872 and the losing participant in the Brooks-Baxter War. Dr. Brooks was admitted to the Boston University School of Medicine in 1888 after being refused admission to the UA Medical School. She graduated in 1891 
with a degree in homeopathic medicine. She returned to Little Rock and established her own practice. In 1914, she became the first female faculty member at the UA Medical School. In 1920, the Republican Party nominated her for superintendent of public instruction, but she was ruled ineligible to hold the office because of her gender. Annie Shopik was another medical female first in Arkansas, of which there are many. She was the first female graduate from the UA Medical School. She graduated in 1901 despite bullying and harassment by male students. One event involved cutting off part of a male cadaver and putting it in her purse. Shopik opened her office in Little Rock after graduation where she concentrated on maternity. Her son Herwig also graduated from UAMS. The Arkansas Lunatic Asylum was created by an 1873 legislative act. $50,000 was appropriated by the state legislature for the purpose and construction of a facility for the care and treatment of the mentally ill in Arkansas. In 1905, the name was changed to Arkansas State Hospital for Nervous Diseases. It was changed again in 1933 to just Arkansas State Hospital. A facility known as the State Hospital still exists today, but what was historically encompassed by the State Hospital is now part of the Division of Behavioral Health Services of the Arkansas Department of Human Services. So many people still refer to it as the State Hospital. In 1903, requirements started to become more strict as to who could call themselves a doctor. A licensure law was passed that required each of the three boards, eclectics, allopaths, and homeopaths, to offer an exam. In 1909, the Arkansas legislature went a step farther and required a diploma from a recognized medical school to be a prerequisite to take to take a licensing exam. And later in 1929, potential doctors had to pass an exam in the basic sciences. In 1955, the state abolished the three licensing boards and created the state medical board. The 1910 Flexner Report surveyed the medical schools around the country and found most lacking, including the ones in Arkansas. The report led to the closing of the College of Physicians and Surgeons and almost closed UAMS as well. It advocated, the report advocated for higher admission standards and to stick to mainstream science. So overall, it was a good idea. The American Medical Associated Association voted the same year to adopt accreditation standards. Prior to becoming an independent children's hospital, Arkansas Children's Hospital was an orphanage. In February of 1912, Horace Gaines Pugh of Little Rock helped establish the organization that would become the Arkansas Children's Home Society. Pew's early mission was to found a haven for children who were orphaned, neglected, or abused. By August 2008, skipped a few years, Arkansas Children's Hospital had, to, had grown to a 280-bed facility, the campus of which encompasses 28 city blocks with a med medical staff of approximately 500 physicians and 3,500 total employees. The hospital is recognized internationally for its pediatric heart center and heart transplant program, both of which are among the largest in the country. In 2004, the heart team implanted the second patient in, patient in the country 
with the Debakey Bad Child, a ventricular assist device that helps prolong a patient's life until a donor heart is available. The same patient became the first child to receive a donor heart after being on the Debakey Bad Child technology. We've all heard a lot about the 1918 flu epidemic recently, so I'm just going to skim over it and say that the 1918 flu epidemic killed about 7,000 Arkansans. The Arkansas Board of Health made the decision to quarantine the state and Camp Pike was put on lockdown. Before founding and operating the Fraternal Hospital, Dr. Fred Jones also helped to found two other hospitals, one of which was the Bush Memorial Hospital in Little Rock. His hospitals were founded to serve the African American communities of the area. Around 1921, Jones helped organize the Great Southern Mutual Insurance Life Insurance Company of Memphis. As a civic leader, Jones challenged the white members of the Little Rock Board of Education to improve black schools and education. As a political leader, he sent a petition to President Franklin Roosevelt recommending the appointment of Honorable Brooks Hayes as United States District Judge for the Eastern District of Arkansas. Jones also authored two manuscripts. The Dangers of an Unscreened House and the Progressive Man. Jones was obviously a man of many talents and interests. Arkansas experienced a handful of cases of polio in 1920, approximately 50 cases in 27, and close to 80 cases in 1930. The first large scale crisis, however, occurred in the state in 1937, when 344 cases were reported. Sunday school classes were canceled and parents were advised to prohibit children from visiting swimming pools, movie theaters, and skating rinks. The cities of Lone Oak and Desarc prohibited any child under 16 from appearing on the streets and barred all children from traveling more than two blocks from their homes. Adults as well as children suffered from the paralytic effects of polio. In Arkansas, numerous victims from across the nation were treated at the Army Navy Hospital in Hot Springs during the World War II era. The natural warm water springs provided relief from pain, as well as facilitated muscular therapy and rehabilitation. The military hospital treated more adults afflicted with the disease than any other medical facility in the country during that time because of its location near the hot springs. Dr. Edith Irby Jones was admitted to UAMS in 1948, making her the first African-American admitted to a medical school in the South. During her time at UAMS, she was subjected to eating in separate dining facilities, staying in separate housing, and using separate facilities. She persevered though and obtained her MD in 1952 as UAMS's first African-American graduate. She went on to a successful career as a physician and teacher in the United States and across the world, but she also continued her pioneering as the only female founding member of the Association of Black Cardiologists. UAMS, the Historical Research Center, actually holds her papers. Quack medicine was prevalent in the U.S. during the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Every state seemed to produce some cure-all of their own, and Arkansas was no exception. 
Lil Fawcett and his sister Nanka from North Little Rock created Epiwall, which was advertised as a cure for epilepsy. Their business was not successful. John A. Rick came to Arkansas in 1905 and established the Lopez Medicine Company, a purveyor of patent medicine. The C.A.D. Drugstore building was built in 1887 and originally housed the William Brooks Medicine Company. He sold his patent medicines throughout Arkansas and the South. Some of his medicines were Brooks Baby Bowel Balm and Brooks Baby Elixir. In 1891, Brooks sold the business to his associate Lewis Hood of Chicago. A pharmacist and the business, a pharmacist and the business became Hood Drugstore. This building, located at 121 North Commerce in downtown Little Rock. It was the only one on its block to survive the devastating fire of 1906. Quack medicine did not stay confined to patent medicines only. Hexters, who promised outlandish results from unreliable means, abounded. Norman Baker was a prime example. Baker came to Arkansas in 1937 and purchased the Crescent Hotel in Eureka Springs to open his hospital, where he promised to cure cancer. He had been sued before because of these claims. His cancer cure consisted of clover, corn silk, watermelon seed, and water. In early 2019, a site was discovered behind the Crescent Hotel containing bottles, some of which containing things, whether it was actual, we don't really know what the things are yet. I don't think they've been tested. Um, contained things still floating in liquid, tools, and much more that were disposed of there at the closing of the Baker Hospital. If you haven't read about this, I really encourage you to go look into it. It's a fascinating find. John Brinkley was another shyster that briefly came, that briefly called Arkansas home. He bought his medical, medical degree from a diploma mill in Kansas City and set up a clinic to help men with their weakness and lack of virility and vitality. In 1918, he performed, performed his first goat gland operation in males. Oftentimes, Brinkley was intoxicated while he performed the surgery and in less than sterile conditions. Brinkley began promoting goat glands as a cure for 27 ailments, ranging from dementia to emphysema to flatulence. He started a direct mail blitz and hired an advertising agent who helped Brinkley portray his treatments as turning hapless men into the ram the am with every lamb. Brinkley didn't keep his goat gland cures to males alone. He also operated on women, giving them goat ovaries. By 1930, his medical license had been revoked by the American Medical Association, and his broadcast license had been rescinded in Kansas because of his broadcasting obscene material. He moved to Del Rio, Texas and operated a radio station and basically sold his projects on air. He then moved to Arkansas in the 1930s and set up a hospital in downtown Little Rock. UAMS moved its current Markham Street location in 1956. The campus has expanded beyond the original hospital. UAMS has regional centers around the state, including Fort Smith, Texarkana, and Jonesboro. The Northwest Arkansas campus in Fayetteville was opened in 2009. It currently is the largest, UAMS is currently the largest employer in the state, 
with about 11,000 employees. Thank you all for attending this presentation on the history of medicine in Arkansas. Are there any questions? I know it was a bit brief. I'll remind everyone that if you have a question, you can uh, type it out in the chat room uh, screen. If, if, if your chat box is not up, there should be a, a menu at, your at the bottom of your screen, maybe says more or somewhere on your screen, there should be a, um, a way for you to open the chat box. Okay, well, if, if no one has any questions, I'd just like to uh, remind you again, we'll have the next uh, uh, stay at home lecture. It will be on June 18th. Uh, Tom Dillard will be talking about pioneering African American doctors in Arkansas. And, um, and then after that, we'll have the um, uh, one on Pellegra, and then I will be doing the one on, on history of UAMS on July uh, 9th. And then we will st start our second season of this of the stay at home lectures uh, in August. So if you have a topic that you'd like for us to do, uh, or if you know someone who, who, who's interested in giving a presentation, let me know. Um, I'll put my email in the chat box. And so if you have anything um, uh, to, if you'd like to suggest something, just let me know. Thank you, Kaylee, for doing this. And if we'll, there's there's not any questions. I'm we have a question. Me. We have a question. Okay. Yeah. From Dr. Davies. He asked, are the photos in the UAMS collection? A lot of them are, yes. Um, some of them are not, and they, sh they were cited where they weren't, but it might have been too small to see. And I'll also say that if uh, anyone would like to come in and see some of the photos that Kaylee used in the presentation, please come up to the Historical Research Center. Uh, we'll always be glad to have you. Of course, you, it's probably, <laughs> you're probably not able to come right now, but uh, when things start opening back up, we'll, we'll love to, we'd love to have you there. Quite a few of them are on our HRC Digital Archive collection. Okay, if there's not any other questions, we'll let you go for t this evening. Thank you all for being here, and we will look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you all. Thank you.